I don't know about you guys, but it can be quite infuriating when you go into a store and you're trying to buy a new processor or a new computer and you're like, what the heck are all these new SKUs and fancy brand names? Sometimes you wish it was just oversimplified and you literally saw what each processor could do. Unfortunately, these companies aren't quite good at that. Luckily, I've made a oversimplified video for you today, which will kind of explain briefly what each processor class does, which one is right for you in the AMD world, and also give you an idea to make sure that you get the right laptop without spending too much money and also making sure you don't sell yourself short. Now, I made a Intel equivalent video a couple months ago as well. I'll leave a link to that in the video description below, but just a few caveats. Firstly, I am limiting this to desktop and laptop class processors, so I will not be covering tablets or server processors, for example. And the second thing is we'll go chronologically from the lowest end processor to the top tier stuff to make things again as simple as possible for you. Let's get into it. At the very bottom of the food chain, we have the AMD Athlon processor. Now, this is the silver variant we're talking about because there are two types. The AMD Athlon silver processor is basically designed for very primitive and extremely simple use cases. For example, whether it's surfing the web, shopping on Amazon, Amazon, online banking, or watching some videos on YouTube, checking out the news, those kind of things. Anything that's generally considered light and activity. It's designed for single application tasks, so you're not doing multitasking. And in that capacity, the Athlon Silver processor is perfect for people with that kind of a use case. Now, in my honest opinion, it's rather limited total core count of just two CPU cores and also no threading, low clock speeds combined with low wattage make it a fairly underpowered processor. This basically means that for 90% of people, I would not recommend recommend the Athlon Silver processor. However, in case you are curious, this is also the cheapest configuration you'll find on laptops, for example, with prices usually starting around 150 USD and going all the way up to around 300, depending on the configuration of the machine you're getting. The next level up is the AMD Athlon Gold series of processors. Just like the Silver series, the use case here remains very much similar. So it's still designed for light activities like web browsing or again, watching videos on the internet. However, thanks to the ability of having threads aside from two physical cores, you get slightly better multitasking and task execution. This means that you can run slightly heavier programs like Microsoft Word, for example, without breaking your computer. And also it means that you have a slight degree of multitasking so you can have multiple, let's say, tabs open on your web browser and it will be okay. Although it is still worth noting, you have relatively low clock speeds and a low wattage with these kind of chips. So it's not designed for anything that's considered medium or high intensity in nature. These kind of machines generally start around the 200 USD price point and can go all the way up to around $400, again, subject to the configuration you're getting. Now we make our way to the mainstream series of Ryzen processors. This has four subclasses, including Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and 9. As you might've guessed, the higher the number, the more powerful and capable the processor is, at least on paper. Starting with the lowest one, the Ryzen 3 processor, this is a visible step up from the Athlon series in the sense that it's far more adequate for handling general productivity. If, for example, you have multiple applications open like Microsoft Word or multiple Excel sheets, it can handle all that. It can run 4K video content. So for example, if you're streaming 4K content on YouTube, it can easily handle it. If you're going on websites that are very content rich, it will not struggle in the slightest. And it can run most general productivity applications without breaking a sweat. It can even do light photo and video editing as well. It's a all around general use case processor. It is of course worth noting, it also has a higher core count maxing around four physical CPU cores. Now the Ryzen 3 processor comes in various configurations, but in terms of laptop pricing, it varies between the four to $500 USD mark, though it can be a little bit cheaper depending on the time of year and what deals are going on around that time. Next, we have AMD's Ryzen 5 chipset. This is arguably one of the two most popular processor sets in AMD's lineup, and for good reason, it's got a very well-rounded approach. AMD Ryzen 5 processors have a maximum physical core count of six CPU cores with twice as many threads. It's also got higher clock speeds. 
All this basically means it's great at running general productivity tasks like let's say word crunching or Excel sheets, but it can go far beyond that, whether that comes in the form of full out photo editing on programs like Photoshop or doing 1080p or even 4K video editing on programs like Premiere Pro, it's up to those challenges. It can also handle most modern day gaming titles depending on the configuration you get and it does pretty well in those. While it's not gonna necessarily max out those titles, it does open you up to the world of everyday gaming. Now of course Ryzen 5 chips do have a more heftier price tag generally speaking and a very wide range at that. They start from as little as $500 and can go all the way up to $900 depending on the other components around it like the amount of RAM you have or whether or not you have a dedicated GPU. But nonetheless this is kind of the middle of the line processor and I'd say for about 75% of people the Ryzen 5 chipset is the perfect AMD processor. A shout out to today's video partner Water H. If you're sick of being thirsty and dehydrated all the time, well, that doesn't have to be the case. The Water H Smart Bottle can change all of that. Aside from looking absolutely gorgeous with that aesthetically pleasing design, this sexy water bottle has 530 milliliters of capacity and a ton of technology to go with it. It has a number of sensors, which first and foremost will tell you exactly how much water you have in this bottle. Furthermore, it can instantaneously detect the quality of that water by seeing seeing the total dissolved materials in it. All of this allows you to know how safe the water is that you're trying to drink at the moment. Beyond that, it also syncs perfectly with the Water H app, which essentially allows you to track how much water you're drinking in any given day or any given moment, and also meet your water goals. It'll even give you reminders through push notifications, and it has a built-in LD indicator directly on the bottle itself, which will remind you to drink water if you're not meeting your hydration goals. It's also fully wireless, meaning you can charge it thanks to the included base wireless charging stand here, and only takes about a little over an hour to fully charge and it can last up to two weeks on a single charge. It really is the ultimate solution if you're struggling to stay hydrated and I've been using for some time now. It really has helped me a ton in making sure that I don't forget to drink water on a regular basis. Who doesn't love H2O after all? Now we're getting into the really powerful stuff. So next up we have AMD's Ryzen 7 series. This processor class has a maximum potential core count of eight physical CPU cores and of course twice as many threads. This also means that you get fairly high clock speeds and a higher wattage count depending on the iteration of the processor you get. All this basically translates into high-end activities. So whether that comes in the form of doing development or programming or perhaps you're doing 3D studio animations or or you're trying to develop different type of data metrics based on data science and data analytics, the Ryzen 7 is designed for those kind of activities. It also excels, actually thrives doing intensive video editing work like 4K, 6K, or even 8K video editing. It can handle multiple streams of 4K footage at the same time. And it also allows you to run some of the most demanding video game titles at the highest possible settings, assuming you have the right hardware to to go with it. The Ryzen 7 is a heavy duty, heavy lifter kind of processor. As such, its use case can only be realized if you have a heavy duty use case to begin with. If you're just buying for general productivity, chances are you'll be just fine with a Ryzen 5 or even lower processor. Naturally, such a mighty processor has a fairly mighty price point. Usually these chipset based laptops or even desktops start around $700 and can go all the way up to $1,300, sometimes even higher, depending depending on the configuration you're getting. The very top of the mountain, we have the Ryzen 9 series with up to 16 physical CPU cores, twice as many threads, high base clock speeds, and a higher wattage count. This processor is a monster to say the least. Its use case is only truly realized when you put it to its limits. For example, if you're in data science and you're trying to analyze or run as much information through your processor as quickly as possible, you'll see the benefits. If you're trying to 8K or 12K video editing, or you're trying to do content creation of a similar caliber, you'll see the benefits. You'll also appreciate it if you are an enthusiast and you will not have anything less than the highest
best possible settings a game can run on or you're trying to future proof your gaming setup in those cases there really is a lot of potential for this processor however if your case is limited to general productivity the Ryzen 9 has no business being in your computer because aside from just costing you a lot of money for no good reason you're not going to notice any difference between this and a Ryzen 3 if you're just going to be watching 1080p videos on YouTube for example so keep that in mind you probably don't need the Ryzen 9 it's only probably good for about less than 5% of consumers in my honest opinion now with that said the Ryzen 9 also has a crazy price point usually going north of $1,000 and sometimes going two or even three times higher than that in overall cost because of all the other hardware that are usually associated with a chip that has you know or a computer I guess that has a Ryzen 9 chipset in it so keep these things in mind but it truly is an impressive piece of hardware Hopefully you're feeling slightly more confident about which processor is right for you in the AMD world. Keep in mind, if you're interested about learning the same things in the same fashion about Intel processors, I made another video. I will leave a link in the video description below. I've also deliberately omitted certain technicalities like processor generations or what threads are, for example, but these things are done so to help keep things simple for you. And the guiding principles I've mentioned here today should be more than sufficient for you to decide what your use case is and ultimately decide which processor subclass is correct for you so don't panic too much now with that said of course if you want to learn more about processors or their technicalities i'd be happy to talk about it assuming there is demand for that kind of content as always thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed the content please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video not only does it genuinely make my day it allows me to grow and also produce more content just like this you people are awesome you matter Thank you for everything and have a great day and don't forget to smile. Catch you in the next one.